Liz, it, evidently he's got a nickname of Mr. 50 Inch, which I guess applies in this case. My goodness. It looks like he jumped off of a trampoline. I mean, his head is at the rim. <laughs> it, I, it does look like he jumped off a trampoline. That is the best way to put it. It looks like a guy at halftime in one of those games that at the in NBA a games. Yeah, that's going to be doing flips and stuff. I he might be could do the thing I've always wanted to see, which is a front flip dunk with no trampoline. Go ahead. <laughs> Nuggets at T-Wolves. Call Anthony Towns fakes out Nikola Jokic and throws down the hammer. T-Wolves get the win in overtime and their 14-year playoff drought. See, I was nervous for you. I was nervous for your wonderful daughter, Monterey, who I know is a big Timberwolves fan. They, they, I thought they had this one locked up. They had an eight-point lead, few minutes left. Home crowd was buzzing. Man, Nuggets end up forcing overtime. Amazing play by Taj Gibson. Few seconds left in the corner, cleanly stripping Jokic to save the game, get to overtime. Yeah, they had no answer for Jokic. Carlton no. Towns played well. Wiggins hit two critical free throws yeah. at the end. But Taj Gibson, his ability, them, him being one of the tip of those guys, he's going to be important in the playoff. They're going to do something, he's going to have to play that role and play it well. All right, finally, Spurs and Pelicans, and Pelicans were favored by three. I just know that. Rajon Rondo finds Anthony Davis for the half-court reverse alley-oop. I'm excited about playoff Rondo being back in our lives. We had a few years without him. We then saw him last year briefly before he got hurt. Playoff Rondo's a different type of player now. We once saw playoff Rondo go head-to-head -head in a series against LeBron James, peak LeBron James, and arguably outplay him for a couple games. Like, I'm excited for that. He is a key to them having a chance to upset the Blazers. Yeah, Rondo's had a tremendous year. We also talk about the brow all the time. Let's give some credit to Alvin Gentry, the coach there. Boogie Cousin gets hurt. Oh, they're going nowhere in a stacked West. Still gets them in the playoff, no doubt. Hey, Nick, how long has the NBA been around? 72 years. That is correct. Fair to say it's hard to become the first to do something in a sport that's been around that many years? That'd be fair. Fair to say that if you did, it would be a big deal? Absolutely. Then explain this to me. How is it that Russ Westbrook, becoming just the second player ever to average a triple-double for a season last season, and then last night after another incredible season, becoming the first player in the history of the NBA to do it twice, hasn't been a bigger story? Maybe because some say he's been padding stats. Here's Russ addressing the haters before last night's game. A lot of people make jokes about, you know, whatever stat padding or going to get rebounds. <clears throat> if people could get 20 rebounds every night, they would. If people could get 15 rebounds, they would. The people that's talking or saying whatever they need to say, they should try and do it and see how hard it is. Since everybody's so, you know, everybody wants to be Talking and you know I'm, I'm I'm tired of hearing the same old rebound this, stealing rebound all this. Shit. I take pride in what I do. Come out and playing and I get the ball faster than somebody else get to it. That's just what it is. If you don't want it, I'm gonna get it. Simple as that. Okay, well at least he's not upset about it. So Tell him, Ross. Good. That's good. Nick, stat padding aside, how impressive is this back-to-back -back triple doubles? It listen. I, it, last night was an odd game. Last night, Russ was not playing his typical game. Last night, they were playing the Grizzlies. He was out there to make sure he got the 16 rebounds he needed. But that's fine. They still won the is game. Is it different than LeBron being out there making sure he got his 10 points no, and 10 it's not. minutes? You know what? That is, a gr that is a great and fair point. LeBron played last night for one reason. To make sure he played in all 82 games, and once he was going to play in all 82 Double games, digit. I ain't breaking this streak because we're resting now yeah. to make sure he gets 10 points. It's a great comparison. What has happened with Russ and the triple-doubles in my eyes is this. Last year, Russ averaging a triple-double because it was so new and because we thought for a long time it would never be done again. The reason people know Oscar Robertson's name more than they know Elgin Baylor's name it's not because Oscar was a wildly better player than Elgin. It's because Oscar has something that was attached to him. Oh, the only guy to ever average a triple-double. And we thought maybe the only guy that ever would average a triple-double. So last year, Russ doing it, my eyes, was probably actually slightly overrated. It won him the MVP when I think he should have come in third in the MVP. And this year now, the backlash to the backlash has been, this year, him doing it again has been underrated. It was something, Chris, you and I were on the phone two weeks ago, and I had the Thunder game was on, but I didn't mm -hmm. have the sound on. And I said to you, I was like, you know, Russ needs like 46 rebounds to average a triple-double. And you said, you're like, they just mentioned that on the broadcast. Like, 
No one's been talking about it. Like, it's flown under the radar this year as opposed to last year when it was clearly like a goal of his. And now people are acting like, oh, yeah, anyone could do it if they went after it, they stat padded. Man, anyone could not do this. You don't think LeBron would have liked to average a triple-double one year? He hasn't been able to. Like, there, no one has been able to. A lot of guys would have liked to. So I understand Russ's pushback on this idea that it's a fraudulent accomplishment. Well, it, a lot of, there's a lot of ignorance in covering sports. And Russ is right. If you could get 15 rebounds in the NBA game, you wouldn't be sitting on TV talking about basketball. Someone would have you employed. You would be gamefully playing in an NBA jersey. And if there was an NBA player, you mentioned it, LeBron. The reason why LeBron don't average no triple double because he can't. Russ is the only guy in league history that has been able to do it. I mean, Oscar Robinson was a special basketball player. Not only did he have the ability to be able to score at six, 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 seven, his ability to be able to dribble the ball. He wasn't a once every decade type player. He was the only player in NBA history that we had seen like that. And then Russ comes along. And then now people talk about, well, oh, it's easy to do. No, it's not. Russ is that kind of talent, but Russ is the kid that when he's playing in youth basketball, he's scoring all the points and getting to all the loose balls. Russ is that guy in the NBA. Yeah. Now, if you don't like it, like, that is your problem. But that is who Russ is. Watch the game. Watch when the ball. There are so many 50-50 balls that Russ gets to because of his tenacity, because of his attitude. And also, as far as last night's game is concerned, when you have played the NBA season the way these guys have, when you averaged a triple-double the year before, you have earned the absolute in the 82nd game of the year to go out there and get and chase the stats because of what you did on a nightly basis. LeBron James, when you have scored how many games over 10 points? It's 871, 879. To go out there and get your double. When you, and when you have played 81 games, all of them, when you're seeing, as Coach pointed out, that they've been through basically three seasons in one, yeah. you have earned the right to do that. So for me, I don't think, um, and I'm, I'm, I'm from Russ's camp. You know, I question what your basketball IQ is in watching Russ and realizing that anything that he does, it's not easy to be able to do. That. Why isn't this a bigger deal it, then? Is, I, it, is it, are we? I, I'm going to tell you why. Okay. It's because the guys who cover the league who might have the highest scored IQ, when you say basketball IQ, just general IQ, we have, in a, in a, in a way, swayed too far in the analytics direction. I love the basketball analytics. You know, I bring up stats, value over replacement player, box score plus minus, a true shooting percentage, effective field goal percentage, a lot of things that I think are valuable and important. But there is no way to measure the boost that team gets when Russ comes flying in from 18 feet out for a putback. That is immeasurable. But I watch these games, and it gives them a boost. There is no way to measure the ability he has to inspire his teammates to play harder in game 63 because this guy's been playing that hard from game one of his career to right now. There are fair criticisms of Russ. He takes too many threes. He, can't, he can sometimes not be the easiest guy to play with. Maybe if he had adjusted his mentality slightly, KD would still be there. There are fair criticisms of him. But to criticize him because he busts his ass every night and says, I'm going to do something no one's ever done, and I'm going to be one of the 10 best players in the league en route to doing it, that's ridiculous. Like, we can't go so far as to where we only look at the analytical numbers and not look at what we're seeing, which is this guy's a freak. And we've never seen a player quite like Russell Westbrook. All right, leave it there. Let's take a break. Coming up, did we just witness the best season of LeBron James's career? Next on First Things First. Now, you can't criticize his wardrobe. <laughs> you can. That